Hello, everyone, and welcome to All You Can Eat. It's the podcast about deliciousness. And I'm your host, Rob Rosenthal, coming to you with episode number 133 of All You Can Eat. Coming to you here in the, uh, well, in the middle of um, of summer. It's actually July 4th, so happy July 4th to um, all of, uh, of my American friends. I am uh, currently uh, situated on the eastern end of Long Island, New York. It's a lovely day, and I'm here with an episode that uh, I have entitled... These women belong in the kitchen. And of course, I'm being a little cheeky about that because today's episode is actually about the women who I consider the absolute best in class uh, in the world of food, uh, media, uh, food television, uh, social media. These are the hostesses with the mostesses in the uh, in the world of food uh, television. And I... I can talk about that as someone who has been watching food being prepared on television for since I was a little kid. I mean, we're talking about five decades, to be honest. That's how old I am. Been watching food being made on television for 50 years. And on top of that, uh, to complete my professional culinary degree, I was an intern for six months at the Food Network when it was just uh, starting up. I worked uh, in the kitchen as an assistant for a guy named Robin Leach, who in the early days on the network had a live program that ran every night at 10 o'clock, Robin Leach talking food. Great job. And uh, But anyway, I was right on the inside of when the Food Network was being created. And uh, as if that uh, weren't enough of a background, the truth is that I've hosted my own cooking segments on uh, cable TV, on online uh, food sites. So, you know, more than just a fan, I consider myself a student of the genre. I grew up idolizing a guy named Graham Kerr, who was uh, also known as the Galloping Gourmet. Dude was my idol. And I will also tell you that Jacques Pepin is the single greatest instructor in the history of food television, and I've had the good fortune to interview Jacques a couple of times, just still to this day at 80, whatever he is, I'm going to say, I don't know, 787, 80, I mean, he's old, you know, but my goodness, he is still on top of his game, still it's just a treat for me to watch that guy make food in the kitchen. Andrew Zimmern, I think, is a boss and I've been fortunate enough to have him on the podcast, along with, uh, I, I had Graham Kerr, the Galloping Gourmet, was a guest on, on All You Can Eat. I've had Andrew Zimmern. Uh, I interviewed Mig Tsai, who is really uh, uh, great at this, one of the, maybe the longest running, you know, host in, 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 the, in the food TV genre. I've interviewed uh, Sean Evans, who hosts The Hot Ones there on, on YouTube, Eating Spicy Wings. So I've had some uh, really good uh, men, people, and, and obviously, uh, you know, uh, yesterday I think was Anthony Bourdain Day. I think he passed away five years ago. I still miss Anthony Bourdain. But at this moment, uh, today, when it comes to those who I admire the absolute most in the TV food genre, it's the women. It's uh, the women. Now, let's talk a little bit about the women. You, It starts kind of with Julia Child, right? She was the original progenitor icon call her what you like but to be honest her prime was uh, uh was a little bit before m- me before my kind of obsession with food tv even as a as a kid and i will tell you that i was never a fan of uh, of paula paula dean never a fan of sandra uh, uh semi homemade sandra i forget sandra's last name I respect uh, the accomplishments of, uh, of Martha Stewart. How can you not? But I always found her stuff to be way, way more perfect and elaborate than was ever going to be interesting to me. And you have to hand it to uh, Rachel Ray, who for many years has been doing what it is that she does. So, you know, respect. And I got to say that I do have a, a fond uh, memories of a few of the early hosts this is going to be before a whole lot of you were even around, but there was a woman named uh, Natalie Dupre who I used to watch. 
down there in, uh, in, in the southern states somewhere. I watched uh, on public television Marianne Esposito make Italian food. There was a program out of England called Two Fat Ladies, which um, was hilarious. Literally two enormous uh, British uh, women who uh, opened up uh, the show uh, on one of those uh, side-by-side, you know, motorbike things. One of them on the motorcycle, the next in the sidecar. And they made, <laughs> they made British food with all the fat, butter, and sugar and, and, and everything else you can imagine. You can go on to YouTube and look up uh, Two Fat Ladies because it's, it's just a kick. And, of course, more recently, uh, credit to uh, Nigella Lawson, who had her own very kind of interesting uh, take on, on cooking, um, uh, also good. But I, I confess uh, to having a bias that favors women uh, in, this, uh, in, 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 every, in every way that you look at it. But why in, in, this, uh, in this example, why in the example of food? I think it's because... They literally bring something to the table. And I'm not talking, of course, about the food. I'm talking about their humanity, uh, uh, empathy, uh, their connection to the viewer. Some of the women I want to tell you about are parents, and you know that because you can see them either with the, their own children or, 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 or just, just talking about them or whatever. And so they had described their experiences you, you know, in a way, I, I would say that, that others of them who may not even be, it doesn't matter whether or not they're parents, not, not every single one of them are that I'm aware of, but neither here. They, these women are storytellers who describe their experiences with kind of a, uh, what I would call a compelling emotional intelligence that, that's much less often expressed by the, you know, by kind of the, the, the men. And still others incorporate fun and humor into their worldview and their presentation. So with that, I don't know how many I have here. I'm going to say I got at least 10 women that I want to tell you about who I consider to be the absolute most outstanding women in the world of food TV and who, you you know, inspire me, bottom line. I will start with Padma Padma Lakshmi, who fills the screen with fabulosity I'm going to now state what to me seems the most obvious, and I confess to being, you know, a man. But even so, I, 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 have, I am compelled to uh, address that Padma Lakshmi is a goddess. I mean, this woman is stunning, statuesque beauty, I, 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 proud of, of being, I, I, I'm going to say, 52 years old. She doesn't hide that a bit, nor does she have to. She is stunning. She has a sultry voice to match. She's got a very chill persona, and, you know, that there's something exotic, frankly, about her, her presence. But looks alone are never going to be enough. I mean, it certainly helps to be that good-looking and to be on television, but this woman's talents are immense and wide-ranging. The Longtime hostess of 20 years of the most successful franchise in the history of food television, and that's um, Top Chef, which uh, she just announced recently. She was going to uh, leave after 20 years on that, after 20 seasons on that show. I shouldn't say 20 years; it's 20 seasons. That's what it is. But that, in all of the food television, in the history of food television, there's nothing that matches the success of uh, Top Chef. And Padma is sitting up there as one of your three uh, uh, three judges for the last uh, uh, 20 uh, seasons. You know the other two, Tom Colicchio and, of course, Gail Simmons, who we will uh, talk about a little bit later. Padma is also a talented uh, uh, cook. Why do I know that? Because I watch her cook on Instagram with some regularity. She is a cookbook author. Not easy. I know that because I've written a cookbook. I'll never write a second one, I don't think, because it's a pain in the in the butt, but uh, Padma has written a a cookbook, and of course, in her case, it's going to be about Indian cooking. She is also, uh, in addition to that, a warm, uh, loving mother. I know that because you can see her uh, periodically uh, having a great time with her her young uh, uh, daughter. Uh, Really, really impressive all-around woman. 
And uh, it's not only that she's one of uh, three hosts on Top Chef, she also carries another show all by, uh, all by herself because she brings her charm and her intelligence and her charisma to a show called Taste the Nation, which is now running in its uh, second season. And on top of all that, she started a charitable fund to help women deal with, uh, with the problem of endometriosis. So Padma Lakshmi, you know, as far as I'm concerned, is everything, everywhere, all at once. Really just uh, an awesome... Oh, you know what? I, I, I forgot to mention. I mean, she literally just showed up as one of Time Magazine's 100 most uh, important, influential, whatever you want to call them, people in the world. And she really is all that. God bless her. I want to move over to a, uh, a woman named uh, Eden Grinspan. <laughs> and just, just saying her name actually kind of makes me chuckle a little bit. i got to be honest. It's, Eden is not like the other girls. <laughs> In two words, she is endlessly entertaining. Natural on camera, irrepressible sense of humor. She serves as a host of a show that I can't get to see. It's Top Chef, but it's the, can the Canadian version, Top Chef Canada. And I, I say, you know, I, the first time I remember seeing Eden Grinspan was on, I want to say, the Food Network. She was floating around on a travel-type show, a nose ring, just cool, funny, knew what she was doing, has like a, a professional, you know, cooking degree, uh, which I, you know, I think is... Uh, is um, uh, worthy and important. And I remember thinking, oh, you know what? She's uh, she's real good. Well, uh, beyond real good. I, she shows up a lot for me on, on Instagram, which is to say, like, daily. And she's demonstrating. When she's on, and when she's on uh, Instagram, she's doing, she's really demonstrating some delicious cooking. Very, uh, you know, vegetable forward to the point where I wondered at some point whether or not she was even, like, vegan or vegetarian. She's not. But a lot of her stuff is is a vegetable forward a vegetarian a vegan a kind of a israeli influenced and i catch all, a lot of that on her instagram feed where her fans will also see in addition to her cooking demonstrations also see her dance and uh, watch her travel i could see that uh, she recently was on a trip to one of my favorite places which is uh, japan with her husband and you know, and she, she turns on that, that Instagram uh, camera to, on herself every single day. So you're watching her travel. I, I, I mean, you can see her apply makeup. I believe uh, that she's done some uh, breastfeeding or some breast pumping in the past and everything else that she does. And so what's the deal with, with, with Eden? Uh, she recently revealed that her daughter asked her, whether she was a child or an adult, <laughs> which is a very savvy question from a kid that's got to be, what, you know, five years old? And therein lies Eden's specialness. She brings a joyful, childlike exuberance to whatever she does. She is a card. She is a cut-up. She is a crack-up. She's cray-cray. And she's unafraid to be herself, which makes her always fun to watch whichever iteration of herself that she's presenting. Good on you, Eden Grinchpan. I'm a fan. And I don't say that about a lot of people, but um, I, I get a kick out of watching her. I segue over to a television host uh, talent uh, of her own show. Her name is Molly Ye, Y-E-H. Unique talent, like unique talent. She's charming and engaging. She's kind of like the like almost the girl next door type who is the host of a show on the Food Network, believe it or not. It's called Girl Meets Farm. And so here is this kind of, I've, as natural on camera as anybody that you're going to see. The thing about her that's interesting is she has this kind of very obvious intellect, but she doesn't, she doesn't play that card. She, she couples the intellect with, a, with some genuine cooking skills and she seamlessly packages the whole thing into this kind of refreshing, I would say, almost Midwestern demeanor. And she's not Midwestern, I don't think. Her food looks just uh, uh, luscious. Her delivery is consistently calm and, and effortless. And, you know, much as I, let's give credit to the Food Network, surprisingly, to be honest with you, 
for discovering and cultivating her talent because otherwise what they're doing over at the Food Network is predominantly, you know, to be blunt about it, banal, boring, repetitive cooking competitions that are featuring preteens, you know. How many shows, like how many shows about, you know, fucking baking wars and, 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 uh, and battles and, and oh, it's, everything is a giant competition over there. I just don't, I, to be honest with you, I don't get it. But with Molly, yeah, man, they have a, a, a real winner, and they haven't uh, screwed it up yet. Unbelievable. But good on you, Molly. She, that girl is, uh, is, is good to watch. And I say girl with, with respect. I mean, literally, Girl Meets Farm is the name of the show. And, and she's just uh, uh, really great at it. Just surprisingly great at it, to be honest. Lisa DeGia uh, is special. You know, when I think of Lisa DeGia, and you're not going to, well, I, I shouldn't say you're not going to. She has, let me tell you about, let me tell you about Lisa. Uh, Lisa? Did she call herself Lisa or Liza? Oh, Liza DeGia. Oh. Well, either way, it's L-I-Z-A. And what I want to say about her is that when I think of her, I think of a uh, quote from uh, Jerry uh, Grateful Dead, Jerry Garcia. And he said something to the effect of, it's not enough to be the best at what you do, but to be the only one that does what you do. And that's what I think of when I think of Liza DeGia, only one that does what she does. This woman is a gifted storyteller. The vast majority of her time is spent behind the camera, producing really a kind of compelling video program programming, featuring the kind of people in the food complex who deserve uh, to have their, their stories told. I think of uh, Eliza as a one-woman wonderkind. She writes it, she shoots it, she edits it, she produces it. Like she is the whole company and the whole staff and everything. And then she interviews them and she voices them. And then she wins the James Beard Award, you know, for her storytelling series, which is called Food Curated. And you, you got to see her work because it's just, it's perfectly brilliant. You can find her on Instagram. You can find her on YouTube. Her site is foodcurated.com. Lisa DeGia, who ha also, by the way, has been a guest on, on this very podcast, is, uh, as Jerry Garcia would say, the only one who does what she does. And man, does she do it well and consistently, which you know, I think is, uh, is also integral, uh, important. Uh, her work is just great. You know, I've seen her, I've seen her shows on, on everything from, you know, guys that had, you know, food carts to people that were baking out of their home to other people that were uh, co uh, cultivating, uh, you know, salt, just, uh, just grand work. Good on you. There's a, a show on public television called America's Test Kitchen, which you might be familiar with. And then they have another one over there called Cook's Country. And I'll watch America's Test Kitchen and Cook's Country and whatever other programming PBS runs that features the hostesses, Julia Colin Davidson and Bridget Lancaster. I, I don't know. I smile when I think of these two. There's no question as to their skill or their authority. And what they're doing there in the kitchen is they're describing and they're teaching actual techniques. So in a world that is filled with dumb, senseless, useless competition shows, and the vast majority of them, I'm not talking about, uh, obviously, Top Chef. That's a whole different ball game here. But all of these wars and these, these uh, crazy races and, 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 and cupcake battles, in, in a world of all that, uh, I have particular respect for, you, you know, people that are actually out there showing you how to cook. It's not a war. It's not a struggle. It doesn't always have to be easy, but the good ones show you how to do it in a way that makes it easy. And so there you have Julia Colin Davidson and Bridget Lancaster on America's Test, Test Kitchen and Cook's Country, and they both come across as pretty serious, and they're pretty straight on camera, which is on purpose and on brand because, it's, you know, it's a serious place. But my sense is that it would be a, a hell of a lot of fun to knock back a couple of tequilas with these two together with some, you know, chicken wings and nachos at like a local dive bar. They just look like they can, uh, you know, put it down. 
uh, great at what they do, which is clearly explaining how to get consistently great results in the kitchen. Which leads me to, and again, here's where the word consistent, in fact, if anybody's consistent, I got to hand it to Ellie Krieger. I, I think consistency is one of her hallmarks, but more than that, let me tell you about Ellie Krieger, who you can, well, I'll tell you, and I'll tell you where you can see her, read her, hear her. Ellie Krieger is Ivy League educated, New York City based registered dietitian and nutritionist who hosts her own program on public television as well as her own podcast. She's also a weekly columnist for the Washington Post, one of the easily one of the most esteemed uh, newspapers in the entire uh, country, and a New York Times bestselling award winning author of not one but seven cookbooks. And if that weren't enough, she has a very active Instagram feed where she delivers a formula, her formula, right, for preparing food that's at the intersection of nutritious and delicious. So if you asked me, you know, I need food that is both, uh, you know, healthy and delicious, you, you, like the answer is Ellie Krieger. Nobody does it better. Nobody does it more consistently than Ellie Krieger does. Uh, her work is, uh, is contemporary. It is and timeless and remarkably consistent. Ellie Krieger uh, is the real deal. Find her on uh, Instagram, find her in the Washington Post, where, uh, find her uh, podcast, which I don't have up in front of me, but you can easily uh, discover her. Uh, just uh, really uh, outstanding, outstanding uh, talent. Speaking of uh, talent, and this one um, is going to be from the, uh, from the old school, but I think that we have to pay respect to Lydia Bastianich, because that woman has been hosting food television for 30 years, Lydia's Kitchen. And all those years, and I've seen, you know, she's doing this thing for 30 years, I've seen what, hundreds and hundreds of episodes, but in all those 30 years, I cannot recall one single dish of hers that I wouldn't want to eat like instantly. And what she might not have in, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't think, what, what she might not have that in, 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 in the charisma department of some of the other ones that were other ladies that we're discussing here, she more than makes up for in her prodigious talent for demonstrating how to produce the most mouth-watering family-style Italian meals and I got to say, uh, uh, you know, if I had to choose, and again, all of these, uh, you, you, you can tell from my enthusiasm that I find all of these women amazing, but if I had to choose one <laughs> to cook for me for the rest of my life, it would probably be Lydia. And as she always says at the end, tutti a tavola a mangiare, everybody to the table to eat. Lydia Bastianich, I'll be right over. Also, in that kind of uh, ilk, if you were, in that kind of uh, old school, I've been doing this forever, is your Barefoot Contessa, the comfort food of food television. Ina Garten makes it seem, and I guess this is the skill there, not only that she's happy and pleasant, uh, she makes it seem effortless. She explains it all thoroughly. Uh, she seems to have a grand old time doing it. And it always looks really delectable. I don't think, again, you know, I mean, I, she could cook for me every day, as she does for her husband, Jeffrey. I'd be okay with that. I can't also, by the way, and here's the thing, you know, television is not only about what you look like, it's basically about likability. How many people are going to hit the dial and watch you do your work? And in all the, the, the years that she's been doing this, and again, I, 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 I don't know if it's 30, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was. I can't recall anyone ever saying a bad word about Ina Garden, the Barefoot Contessa, because everybody loves her, period. When it comes to Mexican cuisine, I watch a woman whose name is Patty Jinich. Patty's P-A-T-I, Jinich is J-I-N-I-C-H, seasoned professional, easy to watch, and you're watching her to learn about the glories of Mexican food. And Mexican food to me is not just, oh, you know, oh, everybody loves Mexican food. No, 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 no. Mexican food to me goes way beyond what uh, most of us think of as Mexican food. Don't forget that there are 32 states in Mexico, and that means you got a whole lot of different uh, uh, styles. 
uh, w whether it's coming from Oaxaca or whether it's coming from, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the the state of Nayarit or, or wherever, and 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 they've been cooking it there for you, you know thousands and thousands of years. Okay, so I find Mexican food to be incredibly sophisticated. And you want to know about Mexican food? You follow the genial host uh, uh, of Patty's Mexican Table. Uh, on I think it's the Taste Made channel or the Create channel. I watch her. Patty is an authority on Mexican cuisine. She guides viewers through the various regions of her homeland, and then she'll artfully kind of take you and instruct you how to cook in her home kitchen. Oftentimes, you'll see her sons around to taste and approve her food. If you want to understand and create one of the world's most glorious cuisines, you watch Patty Jenich. Just a, a great. Uh, uh, talent and and uh, you know they um, she just won something recently and I uh, I forget what it is but uh, she is uh, rewarded uh, awarded uh, for her work. Streaming has been very very good to me because in streaming you get to see some shows that you might not ordinarily see even on public television. So there was a show some time back on, I want to say Netflix probably, it was called A Chef's Life. And the hostess of the show is a chef whose name is from North Carolina, whose name is Vivian Howard. Hard-working, highly regarded professional chef, restaurateur. I mean, this woman looks you dead in the eye, comes across as honest, comes across as real, genuine, speaks right into the camera, no nonsense seriousness. And at the same time, she's got a great hearty sense of humor. She brings Southern charm. She's showing you how to run a restaurant while she's balancing the business with her family and friends. A great show. I mean, it's not, you, you watch you watch a chef's life to see, well, to see Vivian, to see what it's like to be a professional chef and a mother and, and, a, and, and, a, and a restaurateur. And there was a time that the restaurant burned down and, I don't know. I mean, I just, but she's, she's great. She, she's just great to watch. Really great to watch. And another streamer is, are you familiar with uh, uh, salt, fat, acid, heat? Well, salt, fat, acid, and heat are the four key elements to producing great food, basically in any cuisine and in any kitchen. And if you want proof of that, you want to understand how and why, you go back to Netflix and you watch Samin Nasrat explain it flawlessly on her four-part documentary series, that's Salt, Fat, Acid, and Heat, one uh, show for each of those uh, subjects. Vast knowledge, deep experience. She's just simply great at it. You can catch her New York Times bestseller of the same title. She sold over a million copies of that. But I think that's one where you have to go back and stream salt, fat, acid, and heat because uh, it's a learning experience, and that woman, uh, you you can you can trust her. I uh, to this day I still you know if I see her around, if I see a recipe in the New York Times, I'm going to make sure to get my hands on that. That's a talented uh, uh, chef there. Now I know both Gail Simmons and Carla Hooty Hall personally. Uh, let's see, I've had them both on the show this show, All You Can Eat. So if you ever want to go back into the archives of All You Can Eat, which you can find on iHeartRadio, you can find on Spotify, you can find on Amazon, you can find on YouTube, you can find on Audible. I don't know. It's pretty much most of the places that you're going to go. But I've had both Gail Simmons and Carla Hall on, and um, and I really, I mean, I, I really, these, these are great, great women. Carla Hall, so, well, let's start with Carla. Well, Either way, Carla Hall became famous as a fan favorite when she appeared on season five of Bravo's Top Chef. Gail uh, is well known as the longtime host for 20 seasons of Top Chef. And what makes them special, frankly, uh, in, my, in my humble estimation, is that they're the same people on camera as they are off camera, which is to say the genuine they're nice, they're friendly, they're generous, they are sweet, they're relatable. And so the you know, and for that reason, viewers have and will continue to tune into them 
year after year after year after year. I mean, again, Gail's doing this 20 years. Call Hall has her own uh, uh, assortment of shows on, on, the, uh, on, on various networks and, and uh, terrific, fun, fun-loving, good people and, and just, uh, you know, top of, the, top of the game. Top of the game. You know, people who are kind of like top chef professional watchers will tell you that, you know, it's not only that, you know, Gail's great at what she does and what she represents on the show, but Carla in that fifth season kind of fundamentally changed the, the nature of the show. She really w- was a, a winner, n- not of the actual competition, but of like, you know, people's choice. You know what I mean? And I think that that, to this day, uh, both of them are, are people's uh, choice. You know, there's one more that I, I, one more woman that I want to, that I want to mention because she's doing a great show. And, and the thing is, I'm not positive that she would be in necessarily my top 10, but I have to say that recently I was, I came across a show called Restaurants at the End of the World. And it features a uh, young lady chef, uh, Kristen Nish, and she was, I believe, one of the winners there on Top Chef. She came out of that whole franchise, which you know has been amazing, obviously, for the careers of so many people. But I was impressed uh, not only with the show because they brought some. Look, look, the show restaurants at the end of the world is is this uh, 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 Kristen Nish talented, you know, going to some place, some faraway exotic place, and and being challenged to produce extraordinary results under under extraordinary circumstances using you know extraordinary uh, ingredients right you mean somewhere off the 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 coast of of, of brazil making a, a killer meal on on a boat for people and it's like you know what i, I have to say that i like the show uh which is unusual because again i find you can tell most uh, uh, food uh, television shows to be you know not not you, you know, not like, not great. This is invent. This is this is the this is an invention of a of a genre that that goes kind of beyond where it had been at this point. It's not just a travel eat show. They're literally putting a chef to work, you know, with with interesting ingredients. And Chris and Kristen is very good at it. So I, I think I just want to give her kind of a an, an honorable uh, an honorable mention in this list. All of these uh, women. Uh, talented ladies, unafraid, I, I think, to express themselves, which I like, unafraid to express their emotions, their vulnerabilities. And that's, I got to be honest with you, that's particularly challenging in a time of social media with enormous to present kind of this idealized version of yourself. Don't get me wrong. Uh, we all do it. Everybody wants to present the best version of yourself. But that's what I find so refreshing about so many of these ladies is that they're willing to be, you know, imperfect. They're willing to show their kind of real and natural selves, whatever that means. And in, and that's in spite of their fame and their need to project an image. They're willing to share themselves and their emotionality in a way that, you know, certainly inspires their audiences and inspires me. So, let us uh, review. Uh, we have uh, Kristen Nish there, the great Gail Simmons, and Carla Hootie Hall, personally, yes. Samin Nasrat, salt, fat, acid, and heat. Get your hands on that. North Carolina's Ver- Vivian Howard, a chef's life is worth going back to and watching. She's great. The uh, the uh, fabulous uh, Patty Ajinich for what you want to know about uh, the glories of Mexican cuisine. Ina Garten, ladies and gentlemen, the Barefoot Concerta. Contessa, she can do uh, no wrong. Lydia Bastianich, tutte a tavola a mangiare. Lydia, I am coming, bay. I just am um, happy with all of the food, Italian food that she makes. Ellie Krieger, you're just great. She's just great. Remarkably consistent, hardworking. Yeah, love what you're doing in all media, Ellie. America's Test Kitchen, Julia, Colin Davidson, Bridget Lancaster. Let's go out for. Uh, a couple of tequila and chicken wings with you too. That would be fun. Liza, Lisa, I'm sorry, my dear. I think that you are awesome. And they also call her Mosquito, to be honest with you. But that's uh, that's besides the point. You're going to foodcurated.com to see what Liza, Lisa is doing because there is nobody that tells a story about the people in the food business like uh, like she does. I hope Molly yeah, uh, keeps doing what she's doing and is not um, ruined uh, by the Food Network. Uh, Eden Grinchpan, I'm, I'm, st- 
I'm tuning in when I see a story on Instagram because you make me laugh. And I got to say, I can't say that about too many people. And Padma Lakshmi, I repeat everything, everywhere, all at once. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Robert Rosenthal, your host here on All You Can Eat. That is episode number 133. Uh, I'd like to say thanks to the guys from and the team from uh, Armed Radio uh, Global because they produce the the show and it runs uh, live uh, across the world on the uh, that newfangled internet thing. And as I mentioned before, we're streaming all over the place. I'm pretty much uh, wherever you want to get a podcast, you're going to find uh, all you can eat. If you're interested, my friends, I am the author of a cookbook. It's called uh, Short Order Dead, One Guy's Guide to Making Food Fun and Hassle-Free. Most taste, fewest ingredients, least effort. That is my formula. And so you can do that. And also, uh, if you're interested, uh, you can find me teaching classes for New York's uh, preeminent cultural institution, the 92nd Street Y. Go to 92ndstreety.org, look up instructors. My next class is coming up in a couple of weeks. F- from uh, Farm Stand to Fabulous, where it's uh, one and a half hours of live, uh, online, uh, interactive uh, cooking, where I'm going to take all of the ingredients that I find here locally at the farms. They're going to be tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers, and they're going to be peas, and there's going to be corn and, and all this kind of stuff, and we're going to turn it into great food, uh, salads, uh, gazpacho. Uh, then I'm going to do some local you know, seafood, maybe some um, shrimp or clams, maybe some flounder or fluke. Uh, and you take advantage of my my culinary training and do it that way. 92ndstreety.org from uh, Farm Stand to Fabulous. That's my next class. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there you have it. Uh, all you can eat. These are the women who belong in the kitchen show. I'm Rob Rosenthal. See you next time. And remember, life is short, so never waste a meal.